anything with AI right now is that buzzword that's just popping off. That's uh, data is the new oil. Is it too late? Should you be getting on it? What is the cheapest and easiest way to start mining effectively? If you're a technologist, this is right up your avenue. I don't know if your house now looks like it has 400 antennas on it. So we're seeing this massive shift for home miners leaning into... So what are your thoughts on D-PIN and artificial intelligence? Of course, we've seen a massive rally over the last six months as NVIDIA has almost taken over as the most expensive and top company in the world that's all seen a flow of money into the crypto side of things. So with the retracement we've seen with D-PIN and AI since the GTC summit, is this something that you see as it's top-ish or is it just mm. getting started and is this something people should be paying attention to? Yeah, great question. Loaded question, actually, here. Uh, Deepin AI. Uh, so starting out there on the Deepin side of things, Deepin has really come to light over the last year. It's been around for quite some time. However, it's really come to light over the last year because a lot of these projects that have come to light, your Helium Mobiles, your, your Dymos, your, your Hive Mappers, you know, these projects are are kind of buzzwords right now, you know, dash cams and, and um, you know, Wi-Fi and, and all these other items here. However, what has really been exciting around these projects is the fact that there has been massive price discovery and massive demand. And a lot of that shift has actually been related to home miners, believe it or not, looking for opportunities to make money in the current struggles, meaning the high electric rates, the current economy, finding different avenues to go. So we're seeing this massive shift for home miners leaning into deep in. And with that, these projects are exploding. There were just ones here and there, you know, nothing too crazy. And now every time I turn a corner, I hear about a new deep pin project and, and deep in very much won't go too much into it, but instead of your traditional proof of work that we would see with mining and, and, and Bitcoin mining and stuff or proof of stake, which we know about with Ethereum, this is very much this new, almost uh, you're rewarded for participating. And that's why this is so attractive because the electric usage is very low and there's a lot of interest there. On the flip side, swapping over to the AI interest, holy cow, anything with AI right now is that buzzword that's just popping off. Massive projects like Clor or Narai are big projects out there that are utilizing the compute as well as projects like Flux with their proof of useful work project. All of these things. And then you even mentioned about NVIDIA at the top of this. We can't forget about these monsters, these really big companies out there with these massive farms. So they are absolutely the way of the future. And if you're a technologist, this is right up your avenue. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Chlor, it's a project we actually have covered pretty in depth here on the channel. Uh, and we just had the opportunity to interview Dan from Flux. Mm. Can you speak more a little bit on just how Chlor actually works? Like, what is the utility behind these products that's sending them to these highs? Why are people wanting to mine these in their houses? Sure, sure. Absolutely. So what has happened over the last two years is loads of miners like myself and others have this hardware sitting around from the last bull run. And it is, yeah, it's made sense to plug it in here and there, but you're making sense and it's not really anything too lucrative. However, we're kind of slowly getting into the bull run here. Uh, some may say we're in it right now based off of the altcoin season. However, GPU miners are looking for an opportunity. NVIDIA is pumping out new technology all the time, like the 4090 and the entire 4000 series cards that are out there. Something like Clore that sparks our interest as home miners in an avenue to stack some crypto here is the Clore project has found a home or avenue for us home miners to utilize our hardware in a non-traditional way. You know, traditionally you've had these projects out there that are completely separated from crypto and it's just been, hey, take your hardware, put it out there and it's available for compute and it's available for AI rendering and, and other items out there. And what Clore has done has really sparked our interest and it's kind of merged the two together so now we're taking an avenue of traditionally gpu miners and all this massive amount of resources and compute hardware and you're merging it with a crypto project so instead of going ahead and you know doing uh you know earning fiat which i'll be honest i want to earn crypto i'm not a big fiat man i love my i don't like my dirty fiat but it allows you to do exactly what i spoke of but you get paid out in clore and what has been amazing there is that Clor has really beefed up their project. It's very simple to participate on. And there's actually two sides to that kind of project. The first side is where you're kind of provider. You're putting your hardware out there and saying, hey, I got this really nice setup. 
lots of hardware to it. You know, people are going after these 4090s, 3090s as well, but 4090s is really where this has been at. Setting them up at home, setting them up in data centers, hosting them, making them available, and then Clore comes along and will eat up your resources when needed for all these different projects that they're getting into. And there's endless demand. I mean, we, every day we hear something about AI. Every day we hear something about the compute need. And, you know, long are the days where you need these massive computers at universities. You just have a network like Clore. And the nice thing is, is you host and then you get paid out in Clore. And the nice thing is, is Clore has been popping off over the last year, has really, really made a huge peak and a huge run. And I'll be honest, I have made a decent amount with my bag of Clore that I've been holding on to. I think that leads perfectly into the next question. Is Clore or mining like this still profitable? Because uh, obviously mm. with the recent trend, are, is this something that everybody are coming into the top of or should they be waiting to hop in on something like this in terms of an opportunity? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on uh, what resources you have available. If you're sitting on a number of 4090s, you've spent the capital and the investment to get these up and running, you're going to kind of be on the flip side of this project. You're going to be the one that's providing this for companies that are coming in that need compute. However, the nice thing is Clore is also proof of work. So as a home miner, I have loads of GPU mining rigs, or even if you have a rig at home, just like your desktop computer and you want to mine on it when you want to, you can go ahead and put that on Clore and earn Clore through their proof of, of work mechanism that exists. Is it too late? Should you be getting on it? Absolutely get on it as soon as you can. As always with any investment or, or something like crypto, the earlier you get in, the earlier adopter, the better. I got in about eight months ago. Not only did I buy into Clore, but then I started mining it. I've been doing that a lot with some of these projects, kind of giving myself a jump start, putting in some investment and then also mining it as well. And I've been mining it ever since on a number of rigs and it's been very fruitful for me. So you can kind of attack this from both sides of it. However, I will say that if you want to fully participate in Clore and you want to host a rig for rendering and compute, you're talking about a lot of capital. You know, these yeah. GPUs, these 4090s go for about $2,000 each. And you're seeing people set these up for ten dollars to $12,000 a rig minimum. Yeah, I, a lot of capital. But of course, you know, <laughs> the ROI from that is what you want to pay attention mm -hmm. to. So let's then approach this from another angle, which would be what sure. are some upcoming deep in AI products that you're paying attention to now that you've seen have some pretty innovating, uh, you know, whether it's mechanics or mm -hmm. utilities added to them that you're watching for the foreseeable future that could be the next core, could be the next render. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's the biggest thing with Deepin to, to spin this a little bit is just finding an alternative to current ways of life that we're doing things or that we've just settled with with technology. And that's really where it's come into play. I mean, the project like a Hive Mapper project that is a dash cam, that project is a, is a dash cam, but then you get paid out in crypto. Like it, it's like taking the day to day things and connecting in the entire crypto ecosystem. And so, where my interest has gone has been, you know, I've looked at this. I actually just released a video more recently on my channel about is the future of home mining deep in. And it really is. I mean, if you can get in these projects for a fraction of the cost and it costs a fraction of the operating cost for 60 watt, 100 watt items versus 2000 watts or more per these rigs, it's a, it's a no brainer. Now, that being said, some things that sparked my interest that I've started to go down the route of that many of your listeners who are huge deep in fans have already heard of these. So, um, you know, I'm speaking to the veterans here, but two projects I'm interested in right now, I haven't pulled the trigger on purchasing them yet is um, weather related, actually. You know, mm. so traditionally we, we've we gotten our weather from weather stations or weather apps that are utilizing satellites and such. Well, Two projects that come to mind is the Weather XM project as well as the GeoNet project. And both of these are, at the end of the day, they're, they're weather stations. Uh, but the nice thing is they're home weather stations, which you install. They're very simple and easy to use. Small units. You want to mount them higher up. And they're a localized weather station. So you can view you know, all the weather on your app with all the different humidities and, and percentages and everything, which is great. However, people can subscribe to that. Uh, subscribe to, oh, you have this in Philadelphia. Great. I'm in Philadelphia. I'd rather get accurate information, kind of more boots on the ground versus satellite metrics. The same thing comes into mind with the GeoNet one. It's 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 a pretty much like a weather station style of unit. And so things in life that we've gone ahead and just assumed, okay, it's great. 
you can set these up on your own, a few hundred bucks, watts are minimal, and you get paid out very, very well. The GeoNet one, I mean, you're looking at right now, that one is in the main net here. That's making 20 bucks a day just for going ahead and running a weather station that costs you 600 bucks. So it's like, wow, there's some great opportunity here. The Weather XM one is still in its test net. You're getting legacy tokens right now. If you were to set it up and then when things swap over, you will get the main net token. So just two projects for me where I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And it's an avenue to go. Uh, I'm hesitant not on the purchase, not on the project, but actually because I want to rent a lift and mount it up high on the side of my house. So you kind of have to keep those things in mind as well. <laughs> So there's a little bit of actual work to the back end of these two. Because yep. I mean, obviously, I think the retail uh, connection here is going to be the dash cams. It's going to be these weather yep. plays. Now, mm -hmm. this reminds me of something I got very early into back in 2021, which was helium mining. Right, everybody mm -hmm. was setting up their networks and putting these giant miners wherever they could yep. and creating this, you know, wireless uh, router service essentially. Do you see this at all playing out like that though, where helium mm -hmm. unfortunately did see this massive you know, if you were in early, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And these are still early on. They're still, like you said, they're in test net, et cetera. Uh, do you see this capsizing though, just like mm -hmm. helium did where the miners, you know, a lot of people that never even received the mining equipment or, yeah. you know, of course, three wards, they're spending thousands of dollars on these, these, uh, you know, these equipment purchases and they're not seeing that revenue two years later. So how do you see these weather services being able to sustain mm -hmm. themselves over that period of time? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Helium, so I'm really glad you brought that up. You know, when you talk about D-Pin, it's one of the earlier ones or more popular ones out there. I came into Helium just after some of those struggles that existed when it came down to inventory. Uh, most of mine that I actually set up early on, I have two of those units with uh, their MNTD units that I'd set up at two different locations, put the antennas on the outside of the house. Yeah. Pro most profitable days were $15 plus dollars a day. It was fantastic. I did not suffer through what a lot of these early adopters struggled with, which was supply and was actually receiving the equipment. A lot of people got burned with that, which was a real shame. Unfortunately, that same stigma followed through Helium, through their project. And a lot of people, you know, I think a lot of things that we saw with Helium that a lot of these other deep in projects have learned from is just execution. It's all about execution, really. And so I think Helium, unfortunately, their execution, some of their changes unfortunately affected some of these legacy or grassroots individuals. Mm. Now I followed and kept helium running, kept my units running. It wasn't really making anything crazy through the bear market. However, what I did get into and took the gamble on was helium mobile and helium mobile has been very fruitful for me. Um, I actually purchased one down in Florida in Miami where they were launching out the original helium mobile uh, network. And then on top of that, I actually bought and put installed one on the side of my house here at home. And that's been awesome. That has been, I've made a massive amount of money from that project alone. And it's just all about timing. Now, execution, just like you talked about, you know, are we seeing what we saw again? And is that an issue with some of these other deep in projects? Helium Mobile running into some of the same issues. You know, these early adopters that spend the capital, kind of like what happened with Helium originally to put in these units. Now we're seeing, well, there's some issues and mechanisms with Helium and the cell phones that are running off Helium Mobile and bouncing between these different units. So they've kind of just made some hit changes to unfortunately move the profits away from some of these enterprise um, Helium Mobile units like I have, uh, the C CBSD uh, units that I've put outside which is a real shame. So now I feel that burn until they're saying it'll return back to these, which would be great. Well, once they fix some things on their end, who knows? We'll have to see. However, when I look at projects like your original question on Weather XM, and when I look at it with the GeoNet, it's like, could this occur? Absolutely. But I think honestly, everybody I think looks to Helium now in the deep in market and goes, what have I learned from their mistakes? And how can I not make that same mistake? Yeah. And, you know, it, it's one of those points where you just hope the team can, you know, the team can actually mm -hmm. execute properly, like you mentioned with the supply and issues, yep. which they're going to come. And I expect mm -hmm. it to, you know, still continue on, especially as AI tracks the way it's tracking. I mean, the trajectory oh, yeah. on AI and advancement is <laughs> insanity. I mean, they broke Moore's law just a few months ago. So the exponential mm -hmm. growth there alone is going to be just out of this world. We won't be able to expect it, which leads me to a follow-up question because of course narrative trending or trading is one of the best things you could possibly mm -hmm. do being early to those narratives or the next emergences mm -hmm. in trends is where the profit is so i don't know if your house now looks like it has 400 antennas on it and you're mining and, you know, your <laughs> two we got two <laughs> <laughs> that's like some government agency like what's happening there yep. 
Uh, yep. But that leads me, I'm curious to know a little bit more about these weather applications, because if you mm -hmm. watch the announcement from Jensen at GTC mm -hmm. Summit this year uh, with Blackwell and all the breakthroughs they've had with AI and the mm -hmm. uh, traceability of weather patterns all through artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, are they tapping into that AI, sec AI sector as well, where they're using, of course, maybe these enterprise grazed antennas that you're using on your house, how mm -hmm. are they going to compete with those AI models in the future? Or are they one of the same? Yeah, so where a lot of these projects have really kind of pushed is, you know, they're not directly involved with AI. They're kind of your data gatherers. So if you think of it, AI needs data. And the more data and the more accurate data it has, the more the more accurate these AI models can be. The worst is AI models that don't have up-to-date accurate information. So where you're seeing with some of these WeatherXMs, GeoNet, and even some of these other ones out there is now they're partnering with some of these AI models and projects out there that are like, hey, we have a great AI project that can integrate with weather projects. We just need a million of these all over the world and they can go ahead and grab that data. And think of it, you have data that can be grabbed in real time. You have some historical data and more accurate data. You know, if you see a handful of these in every single city, the nice thing is now you can even model that and simulate that based off of different areas within the city, terrains, elevation, everything like that. So I think what you're seeing with these projects, more boots on the ground projects, is actually your data gatherers, which is actually perfect. That's what actually makes AI even more valuable is more accurate information. Yeah, it's uh, data is the new oil. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't agree more yeah. on that. So yeah, it, this is a huge pattern, I, which... Leads me then to everybody watching now. They're like, holy smokes, this guy is mining, making tons of money off the mm -hmm. side of his house. How do yep. I get started? If I was brand mm -hmm. new to this market, mm -hmm. what is the cheapest and easiest way to start mining effectively? Hmm. So there's a few, a number of different ways to go. And we don't even have enough time here to talk through all the different avenues that you could go. However, I do recommend for new people coming in, looking at Deepin. And the major reason that is, is because as you had talked about, early adopters are really making out very well and, and, and becoming very fruitful on the flip side. Is it happening today, tomorrow? No, next month, maybe not. But down the road, there's definitely a lot of that opportunity. The nice thing is about D-Pin and why it would be valuable here is just the low energy consumption. If you're getting into traditional mining, where you're mining with graphics cards or you're mining with ASICs, it's not cheap. I have two sheds at two different properties here. They run me about $1,500 in electric every month. And that's times two for two of them. So you have a lot of operating expenses there. And that's just me doing this as a home miner that has really kind of grown significantly over the last three years. So if you're looking to keep your operating expenses low, D-Pin is absolutely the way to go. Now, it comes with the flip side though. You want to, if you're willing to spend the extra capital to buy Bitcoin miners or a lot of these other larger miners that are very expensive, several thousand dollars, you know, we're talking five, six, seven or more thousand dollars right now. And as the market rebounds, it's going up even more. You're going to see, you know, it's a little bit more guaranteed profits versus where you are with these deep end projects. But I recommend, you know, home miners listening right now or enthusiasts or technologists that are like, oh, that sounds like fun. I want to get in on that. You can do it for very, very cheap, you know, a couple hundred bucks, and then you can go ahead and, you know, your operating expenses are low and you might have an opportunity. I think it really comes down to how much you can kind of jump in and, and how much capital you have to spend. You don't need to have a ton and don't need to spend a fortune just to participate. Yeah, now I'm curious as a mining channel, of course, you're probably mm -hmm. going to be pretty deep and deep in, in AI. Mm -hmm. Are there other mm -hmm. sectors right now that are starting to emerge that you see really captivating this cycles audience? Uh, of course, you've been into multiple cycles at this point. Is it mm -hmm. just deep in and AI you're listening to, or are there swaps or swaps and cross chain uh, protocols that you need to pay attention to that will benefit these sectors as well? Yeah, crypto has grown tremendously over the last few years. You know, it used to be so basic. It was like proof of work, proof of stake mining, and that was really it. And now things have really expanded to the point where like, I even tell people it's like, I can't mine everything. I can't be involved in everything. And there's so many projects. So even within influencers like myself and content creators, we've definitely started to segment ourselves out because it's like, hey, I can't be you know, uh, involved in, in the DeFi side or going farther down that avenue because it's just, there's so much, there's almost so much time in a day. So for me, I've tried to stay within my, the boundaries of mining, but it has it has really merged into Deepin because I'll be honest, I've found more profits in Deepin during this bear market than I have with traditional proof of work mining.
That makes sense. And that's obviously the trajectory with the AI. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as you can, you know, create more and more of that data. I'm very interested in watching your videos now on the weather application. Do you already have those set up? Mm -hmm. You said you were early to those. Not so yet. Those are not, not yet. yet. So what, what, not when, yet when soon. We, uh, I plan like that. Uh, probably I'd say the next six weeks, um, I need okay. to pull the trigger on buying them, renting a lift, installing them, you know, on my channel, it, it's, uh, I do enjoy talking head style videos and, and conceptualizing, but you're going to find a lot of like, all right, this guy is literally showing himself going up on a lift and installing this step-by-step. -step. Um, I do a lot of the hands on stuff, which some people love other people just enjoy the conceptual side of things, but yeah, you'll get a good mix over on my YouTube channel on exactly that. Yeah, I'm very interested in watching the uh, the lift. Is it a bit? Do you know how big the antenna is yet? Is it like six feet, or is this cutting kind of something that's small? No. Just, so know? the Weather XM unit is nice. It's really it's really just a a larger unit about this size that you mount on a pole. I've seen some people just installed on the side of a shed, you know, just up a little bit, um, and you can run that no problem. I'd like to uh, on all these projects, the higher the better, right? The higher you can go, the better this performs. Um, and so you know that's always the first recommendation, but you don't need to go crazy. Uh, I just like to go to the extreme and plus it makes for good content to rent a 40 foot lift and install this up on the peak of my roof, uh, which works out nicely. Yeah, I think that would leave the last question I have here, which is, do you need, does this have to be like 360 degree looking at the, you know, the sky 24 mm seven -hmm. or, or if you're in an apartment, can you put this on your balcony? Uh, a lot of people I've seen get away with it on a balcony, but you know, kind of your proof of sight is important uh, with a yeah. lot of these here. But you know, all these projects, really, even like the Helium Mobile and stuff like that, I've seen people get away with like some crazy things with that one. It's more mounting it and aiming it in a certain direction and such. So you have all different opportunities. I mean, even even if you're, it's a great thing to talk about. If you're in an apartment and you're looking to get into deep in projects, you know, you're living in a city, Helium ha Mobile has actually swapped a lot from these external big radios right now, at least, to more of these indoor units. So even buying one in an apartment, I think they run like 250, 300 bucks. And they're a much smaller radius, but when you're in an apartment, density is huge, right? So that works out perfect for you. So even you literally could buy one of these, plug it in next to your modem, and off you go and you're already earning. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. And do you have like any videos on your channel where you guys you show in depth tutorials on how to mine? What are your top ones that you would recommend? Uh, and do you have a favorite <laughs> for deep in or just in general? <laughs> in general, in general. Well, I mean, let's do both. Let's do one regular like proof of work. Like, well, they're they're all yeah. traditionally gonna be around that, but one that's yep. you know traditional and one's deep in. Yeah, yeah. So I would say if I was to pick two right now um, that I'm most interested in, uh, I am leaning the most towards uh, Dynex, which is another for proof of work with my mining rigs, which is another project out there that is doing a lot with compute. So your GPU mining rigs are being used on the compute side. So kind of like what I talked about with Clor, however, it's all in those GPU mining rigs. You don't kind of have separate ones there. So even if you have lower end GPUs, you can participate, which is great. Uh, Dynex has just had a lot of things going for it over the last few years. So I have a number of rigs on that right now. Uh, pretty bullish on that project. Uh, and then on the flip side, Helium Mobile, as I've spoken to many times, is really where my love is at on the deep end side of things. Uh, it has just grown tremendously. There's lots of opportunity. Unfortunately, as I talked about before, the execution has made it rough at times. You know, my, my at one point I was earning 77,000 uh, mobile token a day. Now we're down to like 1,500, all because of the network oh, wow. changes they've made. So yeah, it really fluctuate. You know, it really plays with your profits, uh, and and people definitely get upset with that. And and Helium unfortunately has a long track record of making these tip changes that affect profitability. Uh, but I would say for me right now, the between deep in and proof of work, that's kind of where my heart is. Well, for the viewers listening, in, guys, if you're excited about proof of stake and proof of work, or just mining or deep in or anything like that, make sure you guys go follow the hobbyist miner on YouTube. He's got tons of in-depth tutorials. I really recommend watching the video with you and your uh, your friend Andy. I've watched you guys like relentlessly for a very long time, and that was a great <laughs> interview you. you had on the channel. Uh, so, but guys, that is your go-to. This is where you get started, and of course, you can see it in the background. If they have the clean background, it means they're a good miner. If their background is <laughs> messy, you. their cords are messy, and you know <laughs> the mining's probably questionable. So, <laughs> shout out to you. Thank you for coming on today. If you have anything you want to leave you. off with, any big announcements, uh, feel free to let the chat know.
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you guys want to learn more about me, my channel, find me on social media. I'm very active across the board. Uh, you can go to my website, thehobbyistminer.io. You can find everything over there. As I talked about all the updated information that I'm kind of speaking to here, you can join my discord over there. We're about 10,000 people strong on discord talking about mining all day long, uh, as well as there's lots of resources. So go check it out. Thehobbyistminer.io. We'll see you guys there.